Hi, lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back, my loves. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. So I heard you guys loud and clear on my Snapchat. Everyone said they wanted a video on how to work with San Simon, St. Simon. If you don't follow me, follow all my social medias. You can find all of the links on the description box below. All right, so let's get into it. Disclaimer. St. Simon is a saint that is very temperamental, shall we say. And I have come to realize a lot of my clients, a lot of my followers that want to learn about him, that want to work with him. Um, there is a specific type of personality that he is more drawn to. And those are usually the ones that have a stronger temper or stronger temperament. Now, this is not to say if you're the shy and introverted type that he's not going to want to work with you because if there is something within you that craves or wants or you possess already um the power the strength uh then he will definitely work with you so one of the things that i get asked very often is how do you know that he wants to work with you it is very simple you guys because he will let you know without a doubt without a doubt he will either come to you in a dream he will make it very known or when even in your altar, you will hear him tap. Um, like I said, he is a very strong and powerful deity energy that is. Um, he makes it very known. So, again, if you've been let's say you've been trying to work with him for three months and you still haven't gotten a sign, chances are he's probably not wanting to work with you. Um, why I can't get into that, um, for every person, it's going to be different, but take this, if anything, when you're trying to work with the deity, with the saint, with the spirit, doesn't matter who it is. If it just, they don't connect with you. It doesn't mean that you're not worthy of working with them or that you're not worthy of finding your patron. You just got to keep trying. You just got to keep expanding your mind. And those that you are connected to or that you feel drawn to, um, there is also a reasoning behind it. Uh, sometimes I've noticed that clients that try to work with St. Simon in the very beginning, he doesn't give them a sign. So it's a clear no. They continue on in their practice and in their beliefs. They become anchored, meaning they attach themselves to a certain belief or they find, you know, something that has spiritual backing, meaning whether it's their, you know, old practice, whether it's their religion that they were raised with, where they start learning to integrate that into the esoteric and into their practice. And then years later, they try to do an offering to St. Simon and he picks it up like that and he's willing to work with them. So again, my point to this is even if you feel like he is not wanting to work with you doesn't mean that you cannot work with him at a later time or a different timeline in your life. It just means that there are certain lessons, perhaps certain experiences. Uh, for some of you guys, it could be certain knowledge that you need to gain before he can actually use you as an instrument for him connecting because that's ultimately what it is so again don't get discouraged if you've been lighting him candles if you've been doing offerings and you just feel like it's a no-go it doesn't mean that he he's denying you it just means that he probably wants you to prepare more or to get more experience so again continue on your path don't get discouraged and this is not only going to happen with him it may happen with a few deities a few spirits um that you want to work with and again, I think that from what I've seen, it has a lot to do with temperamental ones that, um, like I said, I've had some clients that or followers that are, you would assume are very passive and they are, um, 
but there's a fire that dwells within them. And those are the ones that he automatically picks up. So again, it doesn't mean that he does, he's denying you. It just means that you probably need to either get more life lessons or more knowledge in the practice before he can actually work with you. So I just wanted to make that disclaimer. Okay, moving on. I've been asked, how do you basically try to work with him, right? There are specific rituals and specific spells that you can do, which I will at a later time upload. I am working on one of them right now. But there is a what we call a novena, which is a prayer that you do for nine or seven consecutive nights in offering to him, rendering offerings to ask him and petition that you want to work with him and the purpose of why you want to work with him. Now, this is extremely important as well as I've experienced him denying certain people because you're not transparent in your intentions for why you're wanting to work with him, okay? Take it as an example. Um, it's kind of like, uh, think of it as like you're trying to get into the police academy, right? <laughs> they won't hold things from your past against you. However, they will hold it against you if you don't disclose it. So again, when you're doing the novena, when you're doing the ritual of the prayers, the seven nights or uh, nine nights, um, in that prayer, once you're done with the prayer, speak to him as if you were speaking to your best friend, because ultimately that's what it's going to become. That connection and that bond must be genuine and authentic. And it's not just with him, it's with any spirit, with any deity, with anyone you want to work with, I assure you, because again, keeping in mind, you have to understand that there are specific saints, specific spirits that you work with, or that you can work with that have a different type of energy. Now, when we deal with temperamental ones, I'm talking about the ones that you can feel like you will get chills all over your body. Like you can feel it very powerful energy. And those are the ones that usually have a tendency of despising dishonor, dishonor to them. So again, you got to be pure with your intentions and be honest and transparent. If you want to work with St. Simon just because of money, be honest with him and let him know, hey, I want to work with you because I know that you're the patron and saint of abundance and businesses. And I want to grow my business or I want to solidify my financial gain. I want to whatever, but be honest um, and authentic in your petition. If you're coming to him for soul protection, you want to protect yourself and you want to protect your loved ones. Let him know I'm coming to you because I want you to be, you know, my saint or my patron. And I, you know, my fundamental reason for it is because of your protection Whatever it is, be honest, be transparent. It's not like they can't see through your bullshit. So um, be as transparent as possible. Now, I will tell you a little bit of my experience. When I first started working with him many years ago, I had no idea who he was. Um, I, at that moment in time, I was working with certain deities um, and I had never heard of him. Now, the reason why if you search him up and you try to look up certain things is because the practice to venerating him is very underground. Um, so he comes from Guatemala. That's where he's known. And it's a very underground. Um, he's not that known. Um, so again, and, and this is keeping in mind, this was many years ago when he came to me. So, you know, now you may find a little bit more information, though you may not find a lot of information online about him. There is still some that you can find. Back in the days, you couldn't find that much information on the internet. Um, so yeah, when he first came to me, he came to me because at that point in time, I had a client coming from Washington and she would come to me every, like, every six months or so um, because she did a specific type of job. Well, just... Leave it at that. Keep in mind, I have clients from all walks of life and there's no judgment on my part. I'm just here for protection. So anyways, she would seek out my protection and my cleansings. And of course, you know, business spells. 
Um, so she would come to me every once every six months to make sure everything was good, to make sure that whatever she was putting her hands on was going to be a success. And at that point in time, I remember one time she came from Washington and she had brought me this statue, this little tiny statue. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know which statue I'm talking about because I've shown you guys on my Instagram and on my Snapchat. But anyways, uh, this was many, many years ago. So when she came to me and she was like, hey, Pinky, I you know, brought you a little gift. I had no idea what it was. So when I opened it, I was like, I was so surprised, right? I was like, oh my God, how beautiful. First of all, the fact that you thought of me is, I'm so grateful. And by the way, to those of you guys that have been my clients for many years, those of you guys that take your time to send me flowers, to send me just all kind of stuff, you know, uh, this little thing that I have with you guys, where you guys send me, wherever you travel around the world, you guys send me the keychains. I, Melissa, I'm giving you a shout out. Lucy, I'm giving you a shout out. Anthony, I'm giving you a shout out. Um, But anyways, so she brought it to me and I was so grateful and I was like, oh my God, so appreciative. But I did feel an aha moment. And the reason for that was because two days prior to her showing up, I he had came to me in a vision. I had never met him. I had never seen him. I had no idea who he was. I just seen this huge tall man with a mustache and a hat and uh, looking very spiffy. And one of my, in that moment in time, when I seen him and he came to me in a vision, I assumed that was another ascended spirit guide. Now, the reason why I say this was because throughout that time in my early uh, stages of the practice, I was being introduced, I want to say every four or five months, um, spirit guides that would step in to let me know, you know, I'm stepping in and I will be guiding you through this process. Again, I go back to that of telling you, if he doesn't want to work with you initially, do not take it personal. Think of it as what I'm explaining to you, my experience was with my spirit guides. So when I was first learning about the practice, I was really obsessed with like meeting them. I want to see you. I want to hear you type of energy. And it took me about a year or so to start meeting and dealing with these spirit guides that presented themselves to me by name. They allowed me to see them, that type of energy. So anyways, move forward to a couple of years um, when he came to me in a vision. So I assumed, oh, okay, he's introducing himself because it's probably a new spirit guide. Now in this practice, right? When you first start, you're not going to have the same knowledge, wisdom, and experience as when, let's say you've been into the practice for five years or six years or 10 years or whatever, you keep evolving and you keep growing. Based on that is the spirit guides that will leave for other spirit guides to step in. We are constantly changing spirit guides based on our knowledge, our awareness, and our spiritual alignment. So um, again, when he came to me in a vision two, day, two or three days prior to her showing up, I assumed, okay, it's a spirit guide that's trying to step in and is letting me know that I'm ascending. So then two, three days later, um, she shows up. I see the statue. Immediately I connected. I felt my heart racing. I was like, oh my God, I seen you. I know who you are, though I didn't know. And I asked her like, who is this? And she was like, oh, he's known as St. Simon. He's the patron from where I'm from. And I really don't know much about him. All I know is that, you know, my, my family, they're big believers of him and I never felt connected, but, um, I do know that, you know, my mom usually gives him offerings like tortillas. Um, she gives them tobacco, um, and rum. So that's all she told me. She's like, that's all I know. And I was like, okay, awesome. I will go from there. So I did her consultation. We did what we did. She left. So then I, you know, prepared the statue and when preparing your statues, you must cleanse them. Okay. And there is a ritual specifically to what we call curar los santos or curar las estatuas, which you're curing the statue, like you're preparing it, um, basically to breathe life into it. Okay, so when I started to do that, 
immediately I felt his presence. It was like a huge energy behind me hovering over me. And I was like, I opened myself up completely. And I said, I don't know why you're coming to me at this point in my life. Um, but I welcome you and I'm ready to work with you. And I don't know much about you. So guide me through this process. So I did exactly what she told me. I offered him tortillas, which keep in mind, the moment I put the tortillas in the altar within like the next day, I think it was like two days into it and they were already molding. So I was like, okay, that's not what he likes. He doesn't want that. Um, so I, you know, meddled with different things. I would offer him certain things. And what I came to realize is that a lot of the times it has, like I said, everything to do with your connection with them. Think of it as an extension. They are an extension, or I should say you are an extension of them because they work through you. You are an instrument, right? The wisdom, the knowledge, the awareness, they give all that, they pour all that into you. So what I noticed working with him was that I would occasionally go to the store as an example, and I love chocolates. And I would go to the market and I kept being drawn or pulled towards chocolates. And I'm like, I, I, I have some at home, like, I don't get it. And then it dawned on me, like, why haven't you offered to me? So I was like, oh, like I was kind of thrown aback and I'm like, okay. So I, you know, got the bag of chocolates and I was like, okay, I will do this as an offering. Um, and one thing I've always been very, very, like, I just love, uh, and you guys know, if you've been following me for a while, if you follow my Snapchats, you know, every shout out that I'd be putting out there because, um, throughout the years I have built a clientele that has been with me for 10 even 16 years at this point. And every time they come and they're not necessarily local. So every time they come, they always bring to me an offering, which I'm sure you guys know, you know, for most witches, whenever you go to a witch's house, give them an offering. It's a, not a sign for us. It's a sign of respect to the spirits that work with us. So anyways, um, we have this thing with my clients where every time they come, they bring me roses. And every time they bring me roses, I'm posting it on Snapchat or on Instagram. Um, I love roses, right? Just fascinated by them. I love them so much. And every time I receive roses, I love it because I integrate it into all my spell works. I integrate it into my oils. I integrate it into my potions. I integrate, like I just... And the reason why is because that is an extension of the love that is given to me. So through that, I use that energy of love, which is why I use it for love spells, which is why I use it for beauty spells, for glamour spells. You get the gist. So when you're in the practice, one thing you should always know and understand, everything is an extension of what we do. Everything is connected. There's no separation. There's no, you know, people say black magic, white man there's no separation there's no separation it is just balance it is just the yin and the yang at the end of the day i'm sure a lot of you guys have heard it's not about black magic the magic comes down to the witch's heart and that's what it is so take that what you will with it but anyways the point to this is that so i've always been you know i'm the type that if i'm grocery shopping or if i go to the store i'm shopping or whatever and there's a place where i see roses immediately they grab my attention um, and I do have a tendency to always obviously offer to my deities and my spirits. So I will usually grab, you know, roses or whatever. One thing I did notice though, that that day, the first day that I was shopping and he was basically telling me what he liked, um, I was passing through the roses and there was, uh, sunflower, uh, flowers and they really stood out. It was like, almost like there was a glow to them. And I was like, okay. So I got them, I grabbed them and I put them in the cart and I just kept, you know, pushing, kept going. And obviously I passed by the tequila and it was like <laughs> there. At that point in time, I was told to offer him rum, which the rum would last weeks. That's not necessarily a good thing. So I was like, okay, that means he's not really consuming that. Um, so that one day that I got the sunflowers, I did, I was being drawn and pulled towards the tequila, right? Tequila. So I was like, okay. So I grabbed them a bottle of tequila and I remember as soon as I got home, 
like I actually went grocery shopping and I like literally left the meat and everything out um, because I literally rushed to my altar. I started to prepare him the sunflowers and put them in a vase. I put the chocolates in a little uh, silverware um, and I put it on him on his uh, on his altar and I poured him a shot of, of tequila. So then I bowed down to pray and to thank him for all the blessings and for giving me the wisdom and the knowledge to be able to receive exactly the transmission that he was giving to me. And so when I did that, um, I had poured him a shot. So then I do my prayers. I thank, I thank him and I tell him, these are your offerings. And I came out of, you know, came out of the room where I have my altar and I went to the kitchen. I remember that I was like taking out the stuff, the grocery store, you know, the stuff that I had bought from the grocery store. And I kid you not, when I went, I think it was like, I don't know, it must have been like $120 or something that I wasted. And I'm ta as I'm pulling out the stuff that I had bought because I had brought, you know, food to cook. Um, as I'm pulling out, I noticed that in the bag where I had, you know, put a few broccolis in there, um, there was a $50 in there. So I pulled it out and I was like, oh my God, like, what the fuck? So I seen, I, I took it as, that was his way of saying, you transmitted the information, you went through with it. Let me reward you for that. So I took the $50. I was so like, dumbfounded in that moment and I'm trying to process it in my head when all of a sudden I start to experience chills running from my head all the way to my toes and it was always on my right side so I go back to the altar I give him thanks and I put the $50 under his statue now again when you are working with the deity with the spirit and this is something that I can personally tell you because I have throughout the years connected with other practitioners, right? People that are from our same community, the esoteric that have came to me that have, you know, they have their own shops, they have their own botanicas and they come to me for guidance. And this is one thing I do want to clarify. It doesn't matter how long you've been in the practice. It doesn't matter if you've been in it for 20 years, if you've been in it for 15 years have you been in it for one year it doesn't matter just remember that in this practice you never stop learning never be ashamed to reach out to someone that you feel or you sense has more knowledge than you or even if if you're on the same wavelength it doesn't matter like never be ashamed to reach out and to get guidance because one thing I was told many years ago from the high priestess that was um, teaching me at the time was when it comes to the practice, knowledge is key and you will always and forever be a teacher of wisdom and knowledge. And in order to have wisdom and knowledge, you must first gain it. So think of it this way. And this is something she told me and I never forgot. Always remember that no matter how much of a great surgeon you are, you could never operate on yourself. So this is a shout out to all of you, my lovelies, that we keep in contact and you guys are in my community and you guys reach out to me. I love you guys. I adore you. And vice versa. I do the same. Um, so anyways, one of the things that I've noticed, even with practitioners, it's that at some point they feel disconnected or they feel like they're not really connecting or getting the results that they initially did like many years ago. And it's like I said, you have to understand that in the practice, right? In the spiritual path, you your knowledge and wisdom and awareness is not going to be the same as when you first started to where you are now or to where you're getting. So sometimes we outgrow or sometimes that deity, that spirit has taught us as much as they could. And it's time for you to push it up a notch because there is no limit to what we're capable of doing. So this, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because I did have, you know, one of my colleagues um, that was kind of struggling with that. And 
it's okay to be drawn and feel like you're being drawn to other deities and other spirits. Like, and that of like, you should never stop working with them because they will retaliate. No, they will not. If your connection with them was authentic based on pure love and trust, faithful trust, they're going to want nothing but the best for you. It doesn't mean that you forget about them. It doesn't mean, but if you know someone, as an example, if you're no longer working with a specific deity or spirit, never, ever, ever, don't you ever dare toss out their statues or whatever likings of them you have. What you do and what is known, right, for us in the practice is through lineage, meaning if there's someone that wants to learn, if there's someone that you know, if there's a friend, a colleague, someone in your community that wants to work with that deity, you can pass it down to them. And that person that receives it will receive blessings because you're bestowing blessings upon them. Therefore, you're being blessed as well because you are genuinely, authentically making sure that they find a safe space and a safe home. I hope that makes sense. And I know that this is very controversial, but this is how I was taught. That's how I've done it. And I've been blessed through the whole process. Again, keep it in mind, whoever you work with, make sure that it's authentic and based on pure love, devotion, and trust more than anything. So moving on from that. So I, you know, I come back, I start cooking, I start doing whatever I'm doing. And I think it was not even a few hours I go back to, because I remembered that I had forgotten to uh, close the tequila when I poured him the shot. So when I go to get the tequila bottle to cover it, the shot of glass, like it had literally gone to halfway. So I was like, oh my God, like this, this is his gem. This is his thing. Like he's taking the offering so moving forward, that's how I started doing. So I started building my trust and connection with him and allowing him to lead me how he wants me to venerate him, how he wants me to, you know, worship him. In Guatemala, he is known um, that a lot of people offer him tortillas. And yes, that is true. I tried to do that multiple times and it just wasn't working out. I just felt like he was not liking that. So... As I progressed, obviously doing him different offerings like chocolates that only lasted a little bit. But then um, I myself am Mexican descent, right? So for us Mexicans, we have this bread, this Mexican bread that is called conchas, which now all of a sudden it's like a trend on TikTok or something. But if you don't know what it is, it's like a bread that has like a, like a different colors in it. Like it, they, they have chocolate, strawberry, uh, or the yellow one, vanilla. Anyways, uh, Mexicans have a tendency of eating that when they're drinking their coffee, right? And I was like, <laughs> bread and butter, right? I was raised on this. So I noticed a few times, which by the way, I am a huge coffee drinker. Like I literally cannot survive without caffeine. So when I started going uh, casually to the grocery store or whatever, um, you know, my niece would ask for, can I have, you know, bread or whatever? And I'm like, yeah, go get whatever. And I was drawn to that. And it's not necessarily the one I like. It's not the one that I usually get, but I do occasionally enjoy sipping on that with some coffee or eating on that with some coffee. So I go to it. Of course, I got him the pink one, right? So I get the pink one. I put it in there. I get another chocolate one. And I was like, okay, we're going to see if, you know, if he takes it. So then I get back. I put it in his altar. It was intact it did not go bad for like I kid you not almost three weeks it was like just beautiful and once I started to see that it was kind of literally disintegrating it didn't go bad it didn't rot none of that it just started disintegrating it that's when I went back and changed it um but yeah that's pretty much the offerings that I give to him all the time that's what he has on his in his altar all the time uh conchas uh occasionally chocolates um, obviously, uh, cigars is something very major for him, tobacco. Now, here's the thing with working with him. Again, always keep it authentic and always keep it 100% to who you are. What do I mean by this? Don't go spending $20, $30 on a tequila bottle if you cannot afford it, okay? If you can't afford it, don't do that. 
he knows your situation. He knows where you're at, at that point, at that point in time when you're trying to work with him. So the thing about him is that he will bless you. The more he blesses you, the more you should be great, grateful to him. Not that you need to give him more, but I've taught myself that the more he gives, the more I do for him. It is a reciprocation type of energy. And though I've experienced, you know, with certain clients or with certain, you know, um, even colleagues of mine in my community that worked with him, they got results and then they kind of forget him or they kind of forget to continue that connection. He will take away, meaning that if he blessed you with your business booming, he will bring it down to humble you, to remind you, like, I did this for you. Do you get what I'm saying? So again, um, and it's not to say the situation, what I said earlier, when you outgrow certain deities and spirits like that. No, I don't mean it that way. I mean, in the sense that he's blessing your path and you're not grateful, then he's not the type you want to work with. I can assure you because the way he gives it, he takes it. So um, back to the point I was making. If you cannot, and this is something why I'm putting it out there also, because if you look him up or look up a statue, it is really difficult to find his statues. Very difficult. I paid, let me tell you, to not only get him Im imported over here, um, but the size and, you know, uh, it, it's a whole thing. But anyways, if you're first wanting to work with him you do want to make sure that you get yourself a little statue. It doesn't matter how little it is. Um, if you cannot afford that, make sure to get yourself like a printed picture of him, put it in a frame, make it look pretty, put it in the altar to represent his statue until, and make sure to promise him until he blesses your path to be able to get your hands on a statue for him. He will make that shit happen. So, um, what was, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. Back to the conversation of the tequila and the tobacco. Um, I've known some people that really preferred to offer him like an example, cigarettes, and he will smoke those cigarettes. I, myself, when I've had a really rough day and it's been a very long day and I just feel like I'm completely drained and I feel like I just don't have the energy and the coffee's not kicking in. I will literally sit there in the altar with him, light him a cigarette, smoke myself a cigarette and ask him to give me the strength and the courage to continue for the day. Um, and he does exactly that. And if you've ever offered him, you know what I'm talking about, because you will see that cigarette be puffed and puffed and puffed. Um, that's how powerful his energy is. So. Um, and as you continue to grow and as you continue to do better, you will then, obviously, like I said, I highly encourage you to bless him with better quality things that you offer him. Uh, he will definitely take notice of that. And like I said, always blessing your path. Um, now tobacco is something that is a must, uh, whether you offer him that in a bowl that is separate from the cigars. I'll give you an example. These are the cigars I give him. Um, when you're lighting him a candle, always make sure to light him a yellow or a gold. Uh, if you want to substitute and the only one you can find is white, then that's fine. Preferably one that has his image. You can find these candles on my online store. They're prepared when you guys purchase them, uh, with the oils and the tobacco infused in it and prepared for, for, for use basically. But you can find, you know, if you can, and the only thing you can get is a white one, that is okay. Like I said, the more he opens your paths, the more you grow, the more you should be thankful and grateful and go out of your way to find specifically what he likes. Okay. Um, so again, when it comes to incense, um, something that I've noticed that he is very fond of is, um, Copal, uh, which is, uh, Copal, I think you call it in English um or sandalwood it is something that he it's the incense that he prefers and again like i said always um make it a habit and it's not just with him you guys it is with any spirit deity um that you want to work with it is about the solidification of the bond that you have with them 
So think of them not as something separate. Like I said, it is a connection that you have. You are the vessel and you're just an extension of them. And through that extension, they will give you, like I said, your spiritual downloads, the information that you need. Um, I will give you an example. The stronger the bond is, you'll notice because he will make it very evident for you when it's time for you to cleanse. Mm -hmm. He will let you know in dreams. Um, his energy is sometimes a little bit too strong for some. Uh, I've had some clients try to work with him. And then they got scared because <laughs> you can definitely feel his energy and his presence and he makes it known. Um, so just be ready for that. Don't get startled. Um, what else? Uh, he will make it evident. Like I said, um, even when you are not at home or where you have his altar at, um, I'll give you an example. I've been away on vacation or whatever reason. And people that are sitting the home will later tell me that they experienced like uh, hearing like someone was walking in my room or like someone was rocking, uh, rocking, walking um, by my altar or tapping the table of my room um, or tapping the table of my altar. Um, and the reason for that is, again, he's very protective, which is why it makes him a powerful saint when it comes to protection. Um, and it's not just your home. It is the outside of your home and everyone that dwells in it. So um, powerful energy there. Like I said, um, the stronger you build the bond with him, the more connected you're going to feel to the point where, like I said, if there is like you have an maintain your upkeeping when it comes to spiritual cleansings he'll let you know he'll warn you um if like my if you're like myself where at some point when I was first starting my business I was really pushing myself um I had a few dreams of him telling me that he would that I needed to uh, get rest or that he will make sure that I am rested I didn't listen and literally couldn't get out of bed for two days um I was just so tired and so exhausted. I literally couldn't get out of bed. I literally had my sister bring me food that day. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, he's very, very protective. If people try to harm you, it will come to the point where if it is people that are around you that are not good for you or that he's heard or he's seen, they're just not good for you. He will make you walk in in a situation where they're talking or bad mouthing you, where they assume you're not there and you are, and it's awkward as fuck, but it's a, a strong revelation because you literally walk into seeing people you love being spiteful. And it's just his way. I've had experiences where, you know, certain relatives were around other relatives and they started speaking bad about me. And then they tell me later on, I just when I was about to say, like, you should tell her this, like, why are you saying it behind her back? That person bit their tongue like that type. I kid you not like that type of power he has, you guys. But again, keep in mind, if he does not make it evident that he wants to work with you, it means that you're probably not prepared. Do not take it personal. Do not think that you're not worthy of him working with you because don't be surprised if like a year later, two years later, you decide to try to give him another offering and it's a yes. Um, so don't get discouraged, you guys. And so back to the beginning of trying to start working with him, right? Like I said, very important, light him a candle, preferably a candle that has his image. Do the novena, which is the prayer for nine days or seven days, whichever you prefer. Offer him some copal, some copal, or copal. I don't know how you pronounce that in English. Um, offer him the cigar or cigarette or tobacco, whatever it is that you want to, or that you're able to offer him. Like I said, it doesn't, when you're first starting, he understands your situation. If you cannot find a statue, um, no matter how tiny it is, if you just can't find it, print out his image, put it in a frame and put it right in the center of an altar. Yes, it is crucial and very important to give him an altar. 
So what I mean by that is, you know, if you can't get an altar, obviously try to get yourself a small little, you know, a little bench, a, a, a little table, um, something where you know that when you go there, your connection with him is going to be like one-on-one -on -one type of thing. Um, and again, like I said, the more you continue to work with him, the stronger the bond gets. I assure you that he is not only a blessing, he is wisdom, knowledge, and protection. Um, so I hope I touched all the bases that I needed to. Uh, like I said, if one thing I can tell you guys is if you feel like you're just, for some of you guys out there, I, and the reason I made this video was because I got tons of messages on Snapchat on my Instagram that you guys wanted a video, a uh, more in-depth video for working with St. Simon. Um, integrate him as a family member because that's how he wants to be treated. If you don't know how to do that or if you don't know how to get yourself in a, in the energy of conversating with him then don't work with him because even if he wants to work with you they get they take great offense if you don't integrate them in your life so let me just say obviously i've learned throughout the many years right to the point where on October 24th, I always make him dinner. I always make him a party, a gathering with all my family. All my family knows like on the 24th, this is popping and it, because it's for him. So everyone knows we even cut a cake for him. I think an old, old video I did for you guys where I showed you guys. But anyways, um, yeah, so I celebrate him. Um, I every day before I kick off my day, before I start my day, you know, I jump in a shower. I am about to get ready to do consultations for you guys or to do you guys FaceTimes or cleansings, whatever it may be. And as I'm getting ready, I will sit in my altar with him. I will pour him a cup of coffee and I drink my coffee. I conversate with him. I let him know how my day is going to be, what I'm going to be doing, what I need him to do for me, etc. Throughout the day, when I'm going through emails or when I'm editing here on my on my uh, desk and my computer, he stays over here. Um, on my left side is where I have his altar. So I'm speaking to him, you know, conversating with him, letting him know what my day went, how it went, how it's going, how it's going to be, that type of energy. And if I get uh, myself another cup of coffee, I make sure that his cup is still still has coffee. If it doesn't, or if it's running low. I will go and make him another cup of coffee. That's the connection that I have with him. Um, every Sunday when I wake up, which is usually Sunday, my only day off, sometimes <laughs> um, I will sit there and I will tell him, you know, long ass conversations in gratitude and thankfulness. Um, and that's the connection I have with him. And it's an extension. Like I said, keep in mind when I started working with him, you know, my family members, et cetera, they all have their own, you know, we're Catholic background. Um, but then, you know, my, my other sister started seeing things and they started to experience his presence and they've become great, you know, believers. And, um, even my sister, she's become, you know, she venerates him as well. So, uh, it's again, it, it's the people that, and here's the thing. If I, something I always get told is I didn't know who he was, but lately where I go, it's like, I see an image of him or someone's talking about St. Simon. And then I bump into your videos, uh, pinky. And then I'm like, Oh my God, is it a sign? That's how he comes into your life. Like without you knowing who he is. And all of a sudden he, you're hearing about him is because he's probably wanting to work with you. Um, so just keep that in mind. So I hope I was able to touch all bases with you guys. Um, I will be making more videos of other deities or spirits that you guys want to work with. Comment below. Let me know, uh, if it is, uh, someone that I've worked with, which I probably have, cause I work with a lot, um, throughout the years. Um, so yeah, just comment below. If I have experience in that, I will definitely spill my knowledge and show you guys and teach you guys. 
that's what I'm here for. If there's other videos you guys want to learn about or you want me to dive deep into, comment below. Let me know. I will be going through all the comments so that, uh, as you guys already know, whatever you guys ask for, I deliver. Uh, that is my sole purpose here, to teach you guys, to teach as many as I possibly can and to spread knowledge and awareness and understanding. So I wish you guys the very best. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys then. Till then. Bye.